Getting an object like this to work with a curve can actually be relatively awkward. And there's a few things to bear in mind when you're trying to get this to work. So in this video, I'm going to demystify copying objects along a curve like this. I'm in a new startup file. I've got my screencast keys over here in case you need to see what I'm clicking. And let's start by making a castle wall. So I'll select the default cube. I'll go into edit mode with tab. That's edit mode up here as well. And I'll zoom in a bit and press Control R to do a loop cut. Click once to set the loop cut and then left click again to set the position. Incidentally, you can come down to your dialog box here and the factor is the position. So if I set that to zero, that's right in the center in case I move my mouse or something. Not that it makes too much difference here. I'll select everything and scale in the wide. So it's a nice thin wall like this, thin-ish anyway. And then Control R to do a loop cut across here. Use the wheel of my mouse to create three cuts and left click twice again to set the loop cut and then set the position. I'll go into face mode with three. That's face mode up here. And I'll select these two two faces. It doesn't really matter which two faces as long as they are one space apart. So when we array this or copy it lots of times, they'll link together nicely. So I'll press E to extrude and bring them up. So E to extrude, move my mouse upwards, and we've got our castle wall module there that we're going to copy. So back into object mode with tab and across to the modifiers under the spanner just here. Add modifier, and then I'll start typing in array, and you can see it's a generate modifier. So it will generate new topology. So I'll click on array, and you can see there's one more being created. And you can see that on the side here where it says count of two. So if I bring the count up, you'll see we'll create more as I bring the count up. Notice as well, just underneath that, we've got the factor. So at the moment, it's going along the x-axis. If I bring this up, it will actually separate them. So that's 1.1. And if I bring it down, it will bring them in and squash them together. So we've got a squashed one just there. So a factor of one is what we want. Note if I put the Y up to one, it will start going in the Y direction as well as the X direction. And I could take off the X direction and it would just go in the Y, but that's not what we want. We want the X direction. So I'll bring that back to one and turn off the Y by changing it back to zero. You can also click the merge option that will actually merge them together and should stop any splits if your mesh does break up when you add it to a curve. Okay, let's actually bring in our curve. So shift A to add, and then under the curve menu, Bezier curve is probably the easiest. So I'll click on that. I'll go to top view quickly and go into edit mode. So there's our curve that you can see there. And the important thing is that if I want to change the length of this curve, I need to do it in edit mode. Don't go into object mode. So tab into object mode. I'll press Alt Z so you can actually see the curve there. That's X-ray mode up here. The important thing here is not to scale it in object mode. So I'll undo that. That can really mess up the whole system. Make sure you go into edit mode and move these points. You can grab a point and move it, grab a point and rotate it. And you can see how the handles work there. If I scale it up, it makes the curve act in a different way. And I can press E to extrude to bring out a new curve and rotate it around like this and scale it down. And you can see how it flows then. So we've got a curve set up like this and we want our wall to follow that curve. So back into object mode, select the wall. I'll press Alt Z to come out of X-ray mode so we can see the results a bit more easily. And instead of fixed count in the fit type, I want to change this to fit curve. Now it goes back to the start because we haven't selected a curve yet. So under curve, I'll select with the picker here, the Bezier curve that I've created. And notice how the length now is roughly the same as the length of the curve. Obviously this is the length of the curve as if it were stretched out. So the length is matching the curve at the moment. Now what we need to do is deform the wall so it matches the curve. For that, we add a new modifier. So add modifier. This is with the castle wall selected, of course, and I'll type in curve. Notice that's under a deform modifier, not a generate like it was before, because we're deforming the shape, not generating new topology. So I'll select curve there, bring my properties up a bit so we can see that. So we've got the array working, and then we've got the curve underneath it. I'll just bring that out so you can see the names of these things where it says curve object. Again, I'll select my picker and pick the curve. And you can see it deforms to that curve. Now, the thing to note is the deform axis. I wanted it along the X axis and the X axis is the default. If it had Y or Z, it's trying to deform it in a different axis to the factor here in our array modifier. So we've got to be aware of that. The factor here should match up with the deform axis here. So I'll change this back to X and you'll see that working there. Now there's a couple of things to be aware of. Firstly, you might find that you get a little bit of chunkiness like this. There's 
a little bit we can do about that. I'll press Alt Z so we can go into X-ray mode, select my curve, and we can go to the curve properties here. You can up the resolution slightly. So if I start clicking that up, you can see it helps the curve a little bit, but it's not doing a great deal here. And I can go up a fair bit here and beyond a certain point, it doesn't make too much difference. So that's about 40 or so. And that's actually smoothing out the curve, but it's not really helping us in this section here because that's to do with the topology of our wall. So I'll select that. I'll press Alt Z to come out of X-ray mode again and go into edit mode with tab. So our original wall doesn't really have enough topology to bend along the curve. If I press Control R down here and add a loop cut here, 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 and here, and then go back into object mode, you can see that it's possibly working a little bit better. Not great along there, but the fact that I've now got a bit more topology, you can see it's conforming to the shape a little bit better. The problem here though is that the curve is just a bit too sharp at this point. So I'll select the Bezier curve, I'll select it in the outliner this time so we can easily grab it into edit mode. And if I perhaps rotate this around the Z, you can see that we can tidy it up a bit and help the deformation. So you might have to go into your curve and make sure you haven't got any really sharp twists like this, otherwise that could cause problems. So I'll rotate that back. So I'm rotating around the Z and bringing that back. Again, I can select the end of my curve, go to top view and press E to extrude, and it will pull out a new bit of wall. And I'll just be careful how I rotate that, but I can extrude all over the place, creating new bits of wall. If I scale that curve up and scale this one up, you can see how I can modify this wall and go around my castle or keep or whatever it might be. You can also, if I press N on my keyboard, you can see there's a tilt option. You can press Control T for this to tilt. Not that I want my castle walls tilting, but you might want that for other objects. So remember there's the tilt there if you want to just reset it to zero. The other really important thing to think about is if I go back to object mode is if I select my wall now and press G to grab, you can see that if I move it around, it distorts because it's only when it goes over the curve that it's actually modifying it. If I'm over here, it's trying to modify it from a distance, which is all very awkward. So I'll right click to cancel that movement. You need your object location to be right on top of your curves location. So with my object selection, you can see the location is set to zero and that's the same for my curve. If I select the curve, the location is also at zero. The other thing that can make a slight difference here is the scale, like I was suggesting earlier. I've got my curve selected and if I scale that up, it acts a little bit strangely. It's not really sure what to do. And you can see it's working relatively well, surprisingly, but that can cause lots of problems. So I'll undo that. Like I was saying earlier, it's much better to go into edit mode and start actually changing the scale this way so I can scale these up and that will work perfectly. It's also worth noting back into object mode with my wall selected, the scale of your wall should be set to one as well. If I scale up my wall, you can see that it's not following the curve, it's extending over the end of the curve here. So that could cause a problem. If I press control A now and apply my scale, you'll see that I've scaled the wall up, but because it's set to one here, it will match the curve. So make sure you've applied your scale. And if you do want to, let's say, scale it down, I'll press control A and apply that scale. And again, it's back to the right length, but it's the right size and scale that I want. What about if I want to move this to a different position? Well, you just have to make sure that you select both the cube or your wall object and the curve as well, and then you can move it around. That's absolutely fine. A good way to make sure that you select both is to attach them to an empty. To do that, press Shift A to add empty. I'll just choose plain axis. It doesn't matter what type of empty you choose. It's just what it looks like. I'll scale that up a bit so we can see it more easily. Control A to apply the scale so it doesn't cause any problems. So the scale is set to one here. Select my objects. Make sure the empty is selected last. So if I Shift left click on it and Shift left click on it again, you can see it's highlighted yellow. Yellow, that's the active object. You can see that in the outline as well. I've got my curve, my cube, and the empty, the active object is highlighted yellow. Press Control P to parent, and then set parent to object. Now I can easily move around my wall by selecting the empty and G to grab. So I can easily place this into position. I can rotate it and they'll move together so they act as you'd expect. But I can't scale it because you can see that's causing problems because of the length of the curve and so forth. If you need to scale it, you'll have to go into the curve object itself, into edit mode and extrude out to extend it further and have it going all over the place. Okay, so hopefully that demystifies copying an object or using the array modifier on an object and getting it to work with a curve modifier or deform to a curve. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.